All right, I'll admit, I may be pushing the limits of what the SAT could ask, but we have seen a lot of geometry questions where you have to kind of draw the picture because they just give you the instructions and then they ask for something weird. So who knows? Maybe we get something like this at some point. So let's take a look at it. A right rectangular pyramid has base ABCD and triangular faces that meet at point P. The length of rectangle ABCD is three times its width X. If the height of the pyramid is H, which of the following gives the length of AP, edge AP in terms of X and H? So First of all, you gotta know what a pyramid is. And we have the reference chart, but notice nothing is labeled, right? So you gotta know the names of the shapes. This is a pyramid. And we can kind of tell what they mean here. There's a rectangular base. So it's kind of like A, you know, B would be in the back, C and D are kind of that rectangular base. And then they meet at point P. So this is kind of what we're looking at. And so we're looking at like this line that's kind of like a face of this thing. So I'm going to draw my own version of it, but hopefully if you, you know, just need a, a reminder of what some of these 3D shapes look like, if you have trouble drawing 3D things yourself, the reference chart has these little pictures, maybe open one up and, and see what it looks like. But let's, let's do our own version that's a little bit bigger, a little bit more nice. So we have this kind of rectangular base. So uh, do, 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 let's see if this can make any sense. Yeah, this looks kind of good. Um, and then we have a point somewhere up here where the, the uh, these things are kind of converging. So there we go. It's kind of like that. And let's just make it so that I'm interested in um, this one here. This will be P. This will be A. It doesn't really matter, but I kind of want to draw it this way so I can see it right out front. So that's what we're interested in. Now, they also gave us the height, which is going to go from the point P down to the center, right? So this is where 3D gets tricky, right? How, all these angles are really tough. But that H is going to be perpendicular to the bottom because that's, it's, it's called a, a right rectangular pyramid, which just means that it goes kind of straight up. So uh, I can already tell where we're headed here. We got a right angle. We've got kind of these little like angled lines. This is going to involve some Pythagorean theorem. So um, the simple thing is let's just connect the dots right now. Let's just say that this point in the middle of the um, base has to go to A, and that's a right triangle. Okay, so we have the right angle right in there where the rectangle meets the, the height. Um, and we have the thing we want, so that means we have to get this other thing, right? So let's call this, um, I don't know, what's a letter we haven't really used? Let's call this Y. So we need to get that, that side Y because we have the H, we're going to do some Pythagorean theorem, and we're need, going to need to get, all, get that. So here's the thing, too, is I look at these answer choices, and I know that X is the width. And then that means 3x is the length because it's three times the width, so uh, I can deal with that. But ugh, this is already hard enough, right? Do I really want to carry these x's and things all through the process? Probably not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to arithmetize. Let's give this stupid pyramid some actual dimensions, right? Now, if I look at the choices, I can tell the h is, is kind of just hanging on. So let's, let's just throw h as 1. That way we don't have to deal with anything, right? So that h is 1. Nice and easy. Then the X, I guess I could do one as well, right? There's something stopping me. It looks like the, the parts of this that are different aren't going to result in the exact same answer if I pick one for X, right? It's going to be different numbers. So that, that can help. And I know there's a radical and fractions in some of them, and, and that's just crazy looking. But it doesn't bother me because I have a calculator, and I can deal with all that because if I have numbers for X and H and everything else, then I can just put those numbers into the calculator. It's the benefit of arithmetizing, especially for geometry questions. So the other thing I want to do here is I want to try to understand how I'm going to get that, that Y, right? So this is one, this would be three. So this Y is also not like given to me, right? I'm kind of making that up. So I need that and it's hard to kind of see it. But what I want to do is make it so that I can basically make a, um, a triangle here too. So I kind of need to draw another line right here and make another right triangle that's on this rectangle. And this is very common for 3D shapes that involve distances, is we end up doing Pythagorean theorem a couple times, and it's just instead of the, the triangles being literally right next to each other, they're pivoted. So it's harder because it's 3D, but that's the idea. So this is where I really think the arithmetize shines. What I'm going to do, I'm going to redraw my my base, right? I'll, let's pretend we're looking at this thing from the bottom, right? And we have our kind of middle point that we're interested in. And let's put A kind of here. And 
this kind of is where the H is coming down. So what I'm interested in is this line right here. And I know that this is one and this is three. So I know that if I kind of draw this, either way I draw it, I can kind of see that each of these parts of this right triangle that I'm making are gonna be half of the distance of that side. So I could have, I knew this originally, but I, I waited until now to tell you, uh, I shouldn't make X one, right? Because if I have to cut that in half, that means this side of the triangle is one half, which is an annoying thing. Do I really wanna work with a fraction? No, let's change the game. Let's make this two, and so that this is six, and now, as I solve, this is a one and three right triangle, right? So now I actually have dimensions that make sense. So let's find this Y here. So that's gonna be basic Pythagorean theorem. One squared plus three squared is Y squared. So that's one plus nine is Y squared. 10 is Y squared. So radical 10 is equal to Y. Not so bad, right? Well, especially with numbers, it's not so bad. So now if this, I'm gonna erase, is radical 10 and H is one, I kind of have another right triangle. Let me try to, to show you what it is. I'm gonna flatten it, right? I have this, this is the, the part that I just got, radical 10. The height goes directly up. We said that that's one, we just made that up. And then right here, this hypotenuse of this right triangle is the thing I want. This is a P. So again, basic, basic Pythagorean theorem here. So let's just do it. We have radical 10 squared plus one squared is equal to AP squared. So 10 plus one is AP squared. 11 is AP squared. So radical 11 is AP, right? Square root both sides. Now, obviously that's not an answer choice, but that's what we're looking for. So let's kind of get this right in here. We want this to be radical 11. So what do we know? We know H is one. We made our X two. Remember we adjusted that, we made X two. So now we're just plugging in and we're seeing what we get. So let's do it uh, one by one. Let's do choice A. That's gonna be three halves and then X was two. So that's four plus one squared is one. So this reduces, this reduces, that's six plus one and that's under a radical, so that's radical seven. No good. This one's gonna be two times four, right? Two squared plus one. So that's eight plus one, so that's radical nine. So nope. That's no good. Uh, this is gonna be five halves times four plus one. So that reduces, that's 10 plus one. So radical 11, that looks good. But remember with arithmetize, it's possible we pick numbers that work with multiple answers. I just don't see how it's gonna be possible in this case. But regardless, I'm out of habit, I'm gonna check. 10 times four plus one is 41, no way. And just like that, we have the answer. So it's hard, it's hard. We have to draw this kind of crazy picture. We have to understand what they mean. We have to think in terms of these variables, but remember we were able to get rid of that, that part we were able to arithmetize away. Um, and then we have to do some annoying Pythagorean theorem, but it's easier to do that Pythagorean theorem with numbers instead of carrying around what it would have basically been. I mean, look at the answer here, right? If we had solved this with only algebra, we would have had this five halves, we would have fractions that we were carrying around through this process. That is really, really bad. And so rather than risk the error there of, of squaring that fraction wrong or adding it wrong or something, we're just going straight at it with numbers because numbers we can put in the calculator, we can use really, really easily. I, I highly recommend that anytime a geometry question looks like this, where the answer choices are kind of like in terms of, then make up numbers, right? Why is geometry easy in real life? Because we have the actual dimensions. We can get a tape measure or a ruler and we can measure things. But the SAT is gonna take that away from us. Bring it back and then these things become a lot easier.